Leos. Subscribe. What up, players? Warbots tear up in this mode. Today, gonna be doing a how to paint and unboxing of the. Oh, my phone. Shh, be quiet. I'm doing a video of the Great Taurus for Citadel Miniatures. As you can see, the box that it comes in isn't like one of the new monster box releases from Storm of Magic. It's just a plain, simple white box. You get one of these plastic containers inside. And let's take you through all the pieces of it. First, as you can see, it's fine cast, which is that hybrid of plastic and resin. And, you know, overall, it's a... Be quiet, phone. I am looking at something that's making me very angry. Ah! What? Ah! Okay, so I already took these pieces out and looked at them before and found this bubble right here on the right leg. Oh my gosh. That's not going to be so bad to cover up, but on the wing. See these holes right right there? Oh, that's so... That hurts my soul. I have to cover that up with green stuff. Or maybe just the paint. Maybe I'll just like put like really thick foundation paint there and make it dry so it'll cover it up. I just, I don't know. Oh. Oh, that... Isn't that horrible? Look at that. Maybe that's why his face looks like this. Anyways, so for this From Box to Battle video, I'm going to put this guy together and we'll see how bad it looks once he's all put together. Alright players, look at all this gap filling I had to do with green stuff. So many seams and there were so many gaps and I didn't even get to all these holes in the wings. Is it this side? Or is it this side? I think it was this side. These really bad holes in the wings there, right there. So I'm gonna see what it looks like when those are painted up, but I had to do this other one because the the line right down the back was just so horrible. And the wings, where the wings joined the body. Oh, fine cast. Fine cast, you're killing me. These old these re-released older models, I just don't know. I don't know if they if they know what they're doing with them. But we'll see what it looks like when it's primered and painted up. So I'll see you in the next video when this great Taurus is all painted up and ready for battle. What up players? Warboss tap in this mood. Welcome to my Warboss painting tutorial, how to paint a great Taurus. First thing you're gonna need to do is assemble this bad boy. If you haven't seen my From Box to Battle video yet, then you will notice all the green stuff on him because there are so many holes and just gaps where the resin doesn't meet the body, doesn't meet the wings, the, the there's huge seams down the neck, down the back, and just around where the where the head meets the neck. It's, it's really bad. You're gonna have to go in there, do some green stuffing. Again, go to Van Hammer, Van Hammer's videos to help you out with the green stuffing. I took a lot of tips from watching his videos. But okay, so this is him all assembled. First thing we're gonna need to do is spray prime or how, however you base coat your models first. And what I'm gonna use is a black primer spray. And then we'll come back when he is ready for some paint. Alright, so the mold lines and the miscasts aren't as obvious with me covering them up with green stuff now that it's been spray primered black. So the first step we're gonna do is we're gonna cover all the areas of the skin, like the skin on the, the wings up here. Anything that's not fur or hooves or Anything else, just the skin area, we're going to cover it with Micrite Red, which is a foundation paint. And it looks like this, with the white cap on top. So Micrite Red, 
and we'll see you when that is done. All right, so there is our angry Red Bull. Ah, Red Bull. So uh, one thing I noticed when I was painting the the red onto the wings was that there weren't any of the long spiny things on the outsides really to use as a guide. They're all on the underside, as you can see there. I don't know what you would call it. Yeah, uh, vertebrae, the you know these these red pterodactyl spiny looking things. So, so nothing on the outside but on the underside. What you're going to do now is we are going to paint our <laughs> red bull over with dark flesh to tone down the redness. So, paint over paint over the whole thing with dark flesh. Okay? So, we'll see you when that's done. All right. So, the next step we're going to do is I went ahead and I highlighted and shaded because I wanted to make sure that I had the right recipe before I put it on this video. And so I think I'm pretty happy with it. So I'm going to recreate it on this side. So now we've got our dark flesh all over the... I was about to call it a minotaur. The Great Taurus. So we're going to use first a little bit of... Blazing Orange. And we're going to hit any of the ridges on the skin where the light would catch it. So this is like a little bit of edge highlighting, not so much of a... I, I wouldn't recommend dry brushing because you want very distinct lines. So we're going to paint blazing orange on any of the extreme highlighted bowl areas, if that makes any sense. Okay, so I'm going to do that and then I'll show you what it looks like when I get back. Alright, once we've got blazing orange, highlighted we're going to add dwarf flesh to the extreme highest point so you don't want to go too you don't want to put too much you don't want to cover the blazing orange you just want to hit like the center of your lines or where the light hits the blazing orange the most so hold it under the light figure out where the light is reflecting the most off the blazing orange highlights that you just did and then put the dwarf flesh extreme highlights right over those okay so, we'll see you when that's done. Alright, so we're back. As you can see, I've got the dwarf flesh painted on the most extreme highlighted areas. So now what we're going to do is we're going to wash everything, all the skin parts, with ball red. Which is a wash that I don't really find much use for, but in this case, it's going to be perfect to tie together the orange the, the blazing orange, the dark flesh, the red, the base color red of that dark flesh, and the dwarf flesh together. Those three colors are going to tie together really nicely with the ball red. So cover all of the skin parts with that and we'll see you when that's done. Alright, so now that we've tied all the colors together with ball red, we're going to do what you might be able to see here on this side and shade in all of the dark shadows. So by the shoulders of the bowl you can see and right by the neckline. All we're going to do with that is find the deepest shadows that you really want to get into and you're going to use a smaller brush to paint in Badab Black. And I say smaller brush because you don't want the bad eye black to get on any of the uppermost part of the skin because that's where you put your highlights, you don't want to ruin those. So so if you notice here, I took a smaller brush on the leg and I just painted it, it painted the wash into the recesses. So that's what you're going to do. And again, you want to find the darkest, most shadowy areas of the model that you want to put the shade into, with the put the wash into. Alright, so I'll see you when that's done. Alright, so we've got the majority of our model done now because the skin is the majority of the model. So now we're going to pick out the details. And the first thing I wanted to do to motivate and energize me to finish this model is get the eyes painted. So what we're going to do is we're going to use Eanden Dark Sun, which is a foundation paint. It's yellow, it's bright yellow, so it'll, it'll make the eye pop out. And let's see if I have any on me. 
that I can show you. Uh, gotta have some Yand and Dark Sun around here somewhere. Here we go. Oh. So this is what it looks like, it's Citadel Foundation color. And we're gonna paint both of the pupils with that color. So, also, uh, we might as well just get this step out of the way now. I'm gonna paint the, the little ring in its nose. We are gonna paint that boat gun metal. All right, so we'll see you when that's done. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna dot the little pupils with Chaos Black to give it some, some direction on where he's running. Also, we're going to paint the hooves now with vertical slashes of Codex Gray. And if you want, you can mix the Codex Gray just a little bit with some, with some black if, if it's too bright. Or you can, after you put the little lines of Codex Gray in, you can wash it down with Bad Eye Black. That's fine too, to tie the, the gray into the black. And I wish I had a picture to show you. I'm going to show you what the what is on the GW website, but that's what we're going for for that. Vertical lines, extreme edge highlightings with this kind of grayish color. And like I said, tie it, tie it in with some bad black if it's too bright for you. Okay, so we'll see you when that's done. I just noticed that in the Games Workshop, Great Taurus, the model doesn't have pupils in his eyeballs. Can't really see them, but I think this is a lot funnier. If you do them really small right near the middle, they look like really crazed and <laughs> I like them, so I'm gonna keep it. Also, the the snout you'll notice on the Games Workshop website is black, so, but, but then it's kind of like blended to a black from the red on the face. So what I did was chaos black on the snout and the lips, and then I tried to blend it up using bad at black, and then a mix of Chaos Black and Dark Flesh before going to the straight Dark Flesh. So I, I'm kind of happy with it. Next thing we're going to do is the teeth and the horns. And I don't really like the gradual black fading to the brown that the Games Workshop website does. Let me show you what it looks like really quick since there's no box art. So you see it it goes from white bone and brown to black to this astronomicon gray kind of white at the end and I, you know I don't really like it I try to keep my models as close to what the games workshop standard is but in this case and I, I, I don't know I just don't like it so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint the horns here and the teeth I'm gonna paint everything deneb stone and then we'll do some highlighting and shading from there. So I'll see you when that's done. All right, so that is very, very bright bone color. We'll dull it down in a little bit with some washes. But while we're waiting for that to dry, we're gonna take a little bit of regal blue. It's this dark blue color. And we're going to lightly dry brush any of the fur on the Taurus's back, tail, and head and we're going for an effect that is highlighted black but really deep black so that it's not it doesn't come out gray or white we're gonna do some gray highlights on the wings but for the fur we're gonna go with a really deep black and to to do that I, I learned that you can either highlight black in one of two ways either by using gray or white or with blue and it just changes really subtly the way that the model looks so dry brush really lightly some regal blue onto the hair the fur on the back and the head and we'll be back when that's done what up players now that we've done that we are going to dry brush lightly on top of that in certain spots you don't want to do the whole thing but you want to find certain spots you want to highlight and bring the bring out with a dry brush. Those spots you're going to use Fenris Gray, which is a little lighter blue, but it, it adds in some some gray to the blue, so it's not as 
It's not it's not blue blue and it's not gray gray. It's just in the middle blue gray. Ah, all right. So we're gonna really lightly dry brush on top of the Regal Blue with that, and we'll show you what that looks like in just a second. All right. The last thing I did to highlight up this hair is that I really lightly dry brushed some Fortress Gray. So the effect that you get is you see the blue underneath and then you see the, the gray at the top. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to paint over the whole thing with a little bit of watered down bad at black because I don't, I, I want to tie the colors together, the blues and the grays. And while I'm doing that, I'm also going to wash all of these bone, bright bones with the horns and the tusks and the, and the teeth. I'm going to wash that down with Griffin Sepia, which is another GW wash if you haven't seen that. So Griffin Sepia for the all of the teeth and the horns and Bada Black on the hair and we'll show you what that looks like when I come back. Alright so it looks like the black at the tips is actually realistic and true to life. I thought it was something GW was doing to be fancy but uh, I guess I'm gonna have to because just looking at them the, the white just seems too bright so I'm going to try and copy what GW's website is doing and hopefully make it look less like a children's toy and more like a, you know, an artistic piece of, of sculpting. So, ah, oh, look at that mold bubble. Look at that bubble. Arr. So, it's also going to cover that up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Chaos Black at the very tips and then I'm going to draw lines around the horns to show kind of streaks of where the where the the black is going to blend into the the whiter part of the horn, kind of like that. Uh, there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna do that, and we'll see what that looks like when we get back. Mm -hmm. All right, so I painted chaos black on the tips of the horns, and then I tried to blend up a little bit with some badass -bad black. I also had to repaint the the horns with Deneb stone just to get a good base color in and uh, I think this will turn out alright though for wh for wh while that's drying while I'm waiting for that to dry I'm gonna start, get to start <laughs> get started working on the base so I covered the entire base with Elmer's glue I'm gonna dip it in some flock and then let that start drying not flock but uh, some sand some ballast and while that's drying, then we're going to get finished with the horns and then do a little bit of highlighting on the wings and that should be it with this model. So the next step I'm going to do is paint Griffin Sepia again on the horns and I'm also going to do, when that's dry, Devlin Mud on the underside and where the horn meets the head just to uh, give it a little bit of a deeper shading. I'm also going to paint the base, Camry Brown, the rim Camry Brown, and I'm going to paint the top of it, see I wrote it down here on my computer so I have to look at it for a second, I'm going to paint the top of it Chaos Black to start, so that it starts with the black on the top and Camry Brown on the rim. Alright, see you when that's done. Alright, so I'm really happy with the way that the horns turned out. They look like they got tied into the black with the once you put in the Griffin Sepia and the Devlin Mud. And what we're doing with the wings now on the underside is I took some Deneb Stone and I just painted or dry brushed lines down the sides, down the insides of the wings to simulate the light catching them. So again, that's Deneb Stone on the sides. For the base, we're going to paint over the black now. We're going to paint it with Scorched Brown. And then we're going to dry brush over that with Vermin Brown. So Scorched Brown and then Vermin Brown for the base, Deneb Stone for the wings. Okay, we'll see you when that's done. Alright, so now that the wings are done, that is pretty much it for the model. You can check out where the highlighting and the shading really pops on the skin. Crazy bull eyeballs. 
And um, yeah, everything looks to be tying together really nicely. The last thing for our base that we're gonna do is we're gonna lightly dry brush with some bleached bone. And when we're done with that, we're going to cover with this grass green, which is kind of like this mossy grass, and then cover that, or go around it with some step grass from Battlefields from Army Painter. So I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna show you what that looks like when we wrap this whole video up. Alright players, this is the end product. Hope you enjoyed my War Boss tutorial. Here's what the base looks like. Flocked and painted. So, I think I went a little bit heavy with the grass green. You can't really see where the, the, the step grass is, but uh, I think it's gonna be okay once it dries. It should look a little bit better. I think another mistake I made was I connected all the grass together in the center. And um, I think I probably should have gone more in a little bit of patch, you know, a little, gone done patches of it more. But that's okay, I'm kind of happy with it. And, you know, I'm only gonna ever be able to use this for Storm of Magic games anyway, unless they re release the Chaos Dwarf book. And, which I think the, the Great Taurus comes from originally when it was a Chaos model. But I'm happy with it, I'm gonna put them on my shelf take them out the next time I do a Storm of Chaos game, and, and, yeah, there he is, so, thanks for watching, I, I know this War Boss tutorial probably won't apply to a lot of you, <laughs> since this is a very specific model, not a lot of people collect it, so that's, that's totally okay, I wanted to do something a little bit off the beaten path, I've got the Vampire Counts Banshee sitting, waiting for me, a lot of other new fine cast stuff, and uh, I just wanted to do something a little bit different. So hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.